All right, in this video, I want to talk about how pastors and priests try to get you to jump through flaming hoops. They want you under their thumb, under their control. And how do they do this? Well, they bring in two things. They bring in the error and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And what that is, is a separation between the clergy and the laity or the people of the church. So all the people doing the preaching and running the church, they're up here. And you who go to church, you're down here. That's the first thing they do. The next thing they do is they apply works. So they're going to be like, hey, if you're saved, you're going to keep the commandments. If you're saved, you're going to stop sinning. If you're saved, you're going to stop drinking. You're going to stop smoking. You're going to stop this. You're going to stop that. Stop cussing. You're going to dress nice. You're going to go to church every Sunday. You're going to do that and this and the other thing. Or you're going to go to church every Sabbath. You know, whatever your church is saying. You got to do those works to prove you're saved. If you don't do those things, you're not saved. Not saved. And they act as though they have the authority to tell you that. And they try to make it seem as though they're giving the impression that they're doing these things and you need to be doing them too. But it's just getting you jump to jump through flaming hoops. Remember this one day I was getting uh, discharged from the military and it was a long process and it was a Sunday. There wasn't anything I can do for paperwork or whatnot. So I was walking around the barracks. Somebody stopped me and goes, you want to go to a church? I was like, sure. Went to the church and I thought it was crazy that they had this... Uh, Two things I noticed is that they they put all the white people in the front and they had the back family sit in the way back. As the first thing I noticed was the segregation. I was like, you know, each to their own, okay, whatever. And they escorted me to the front. So like, I didn't choose where I sat. They escorted me to the front and they had the whole big drum set and all these instruments and they started and ended the service with all this loud banging and music and whatnot, it, you know, I didn't care too much for it, but, you know, each their own. And the pastor was saying some things, and I was just like, okay, uh, I don't agree with what he's saying, so I just opened my Bible and was reading out of it. And then he asked people to all bow and everything, right? And, and I was just like, no, I'm just going to keep reading my Bible. And he uh, came and sat next to me. And said, you know, why don't you, you know, bow down? And it was just like, no, I don't want to. I mean, why? what's the deep, big deal here? And he put his arm around me and talked to me a little bit. And I was just like, okay, listening to him. And he started putting pressure on his arm to push me like, hey, get down, get on your knees. And I was just like, uh, you're being very weird and making me uncomfortable. And if you were doing this in some other situation, you know, violence might be the answer to this problem. And he got up and backed up and said, if you're saved, you'll get down. He just said it loud, like for everybody to hear, as if I'm going to care what he thinks and what everybody else thinks. Like, oh, if I don't get down, then everybody's going to think I'm not saved and he's going to think I'm not saved and I have to prove I'm saved. So I have to get down on my knees. It was just like, okay. And at the end of the service, they all were just quiet, kind of awkward, because they say that they go to this buffet after the service. And they just took, one of the guys just took me right back to the base. And I was like, glad to kind of be out of that mess. But it was an interesting story because I can apply it to here. That's how this whole thing works. They separate the clergy from the laity when we're all one body. Nobody's above anybody else. They can call out our sin. We can call out their sin. They're not above reproach. They're not above us where we can't call them out for their bullshit. That's just not how it is. And this whole thing about jumping through the hoops, you got to prove you're saved. Jump through the hoop. Come on. Prove it. They get you dancing there for them. Like little monkeys. Because Nicolaitan means... To conquer the people, conquer the laity. And that's what they're doing. That's why they bring works in, because it allows the pastor 
to manipulate and control the sheep so that he can get more ties. He can get more people coming in. He controls them with guilt. Because guess what? You can never keep the commandments. You can never stop sinning. And you're going to have all these flaws with you. But your body has been circumcised from your spirit. So that you're not held condemned and guilty. Your body may deal with the consequences. And your body may die. And before then, God may chastise you. But you're saved. Your spirit's saved because you believe in Jesus. He died for your sins. You don't have to jump through these faming hoops. It's something they do to control you. And when they can't control you, you make them feel awkward. As I did with uh, that one church. Where everybody just didn't really want to talk. Didn't want to say anything anymore. It was a very strange experience, kind of fun, you no know, looking back, but uh, yeah, don't get caught up in all that. You, you, need, you can go straight to God yourself. He's your judge. Your pastor is not your judge. Your priest is not your judge. Nobody's your judge. And if they're trying to put guilt trips on you and make you feel bad about things, they're just trying to control you and manipulate you. Trying to get you to dance and jump through hoops to prove things to them. As if you have to prove anything to them. You don't. You don't have to prove yourself to any pastor, preacher, priest. They can eat a bowl of cow shit for all I'm concerned. But they'll probably take that sort of thing and that kind of language to say, Oh, he's not saved. He doesn't have the spirit and all this stuff. And they condemn me because that's just how they are. They're judgmental, and they condemn people so that they can try to control others. Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came that the world might be saved through him. If you believe on him, you're not condemned. There's no condemnation in Jesus Christ. That doesn't make sinning okay, doing bad things okay. It means you don't lose your salvation because of him. So I just felt motivated, inspired to do this. Thanks for watching and take care.